Hi, my name is Paul from Physics High, and today I would like to give you an overview of Module 7, The Nature of Light, and in particular the third inquiry question, which deals with the quantum nature of light. And a quick reminder that anything that I produce here will be available in a principal version, and the link is in the description below. Now this module is divided up into four inquiry questions. The first one is looking at what is light? The second inquiry question says what evidence supports the wave model of light and what predictions can be made using this model? In essence, we're interested in the wave model. The next question says what evidence supports the particle model of light and what are the implications of this evidence for the development of the quantum model of light? In essence, we are interested in what we refer to as the particle model. And finally, we're looking at consequences. The question that is asked is, how does the behavior of light affect the concepts of time, space, and matter? In essence, we're dealing with the concept of relativity. In order to understand the particle model, you need to know the history behind it. And so we first are introduced to the idea of a black body and its related curve. Now, the analysis of an object emitting light establishes a very, uh, a very discrete type of pattern of a curve, which is often referred to as the black body curve, and it looks a bit like this, which gives us the spectral radiance or the intensity for every given wavelength for all the wavelengths that are emitted from a black. And scientists in the 19th century tried to provide a mathematical model as to why this occurred. Now, allied to this is also the Wynne's law, and Wynne's law establishes the mathematical relationship between a temperature of a black body and the, the, the wavelength with the peak spectral irradiance. Now, from that, and this is where we then move on, is to say, well, this is where Planck comes in. And Planck tried to find a mathematical model to establish why this curve has the shape the way it does. And that leads us to an understanding that energy can be quantized. In other words, energy can come in discrete values, which leads us to the mathematical formula of E equals HF. Again, the syllabus here is saying, okay, well, light is a wave-like uh, property, but now what we're starting to see is that energy is not behaving continuously, it's ha behaving discreetly. And then what this culminates in is Einstein and the photoelectric effect. And the photoelectric effect basically can be explained if we treat light as arriving in discrete units or discrete quanta, only later using the term photons, but it provides us evidence for the particle model of light and that the photoelectric effect cannot be explained by light having a wave-like property. And so now what we establish here is that light has a duality. It has both wave and particle-like properties depending on the experimental setup that you do. It can behave as waves when you do diffraction, but it'll be only can be explained as particles when you look at the photoelectric effect. And so you need to be familiar with not only the mathematical process that's going on here, with but understand the underpinning inquiry question it addresses, that this provides evidence for the particle or quantum nature of light. Well, I hope that it helps you understand this particular inquiry question and as it fits in the other inquiry questions within this particular module. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe Put a comment down below if this has been helpful for you. And please consider supporting me by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description below. My name is Paul from Physics High. Take care and bye for now.